Segment 4. This is Tyler Newcomb. 3, 2, 1. Welcome back, Cleveland, for our final segment of The Advocate tonight. We're talking to Tyler Newcomb. Uh, he published a book of his father's works concerning the uh, assassination of President John Kennedy. This is the 60th anniversary year of that assassination. And uh, I'm sorry, the 50th. I'm trying to put more years on this. 50th years. And with us, we have Tyler Newcomb. Tyler, uh, again, thank you for joining with us tonight. Thanks for having me. You know, we're, we're talking about um, the theory that your father uh, basically came up with after he studied uh, I assume photographs and witness statements and so forth of uh, the facts and circumstances surrounding the assassination of President Kennedy. And uh, I think just before the break, his conclusion was that uh, President Kennedy was shot by one of the people at the presidential car in the motorcade. And yeah. uh, who, who was it? William? William Greer. Greer. As a matter of fact, it if you watch the Zapruder, you've seen the film, right? Oh, yes. Well, take your eyes off of Kennedy. There is, although it doesn't show a gun, at one time I think it was, because the Secret Service had that film, it had all the evidence, um, there is an optical illusion, and it's, it's very apparent. The body language of Bill Greer turns around exactly at the instant that the president is shot in the head, and the timing of it is exactly perfect for making him the shooter. I th it's not proof, and it's, I don't consider it evidence, but I don't think the Zapruder film, the original Zapruder film, survived the editing process, and I think it was altered. But there's enough in there to show the body language of Greer. He was facing the president. He was staring at the president. The car was slowing down to almost a dead stop. We've got police officers saying it stopped twice during the shooting. That's sinister. You're supposed to step on the gas, not the brake. His brake lights were on in films. So we suspect the Secret Service, and especially those two in the front seat. The, um, I, that's what I was going to ask, is that where were the Secret Service members who you suspected of doing the shooting, where were they sitting? In the front? They were in the front seat. One was driving. He's the shooter. And the other guy next to him, Roy Kellerman, is the passenger side. Now, uh, does anyone out there share this, uh, this conclusion? But yeah, lots of people do, and lots of people ridicule it. How could that happen? Oh, right. But, but the book details, and Barry Goldwater said it very well. He said it was meticulous, meticulously well-researched, and it is. And we have witnesses, Jean Hill, who said uh, even that day to the Dallas police that she thought she saw men in plain clothes shooting back. And the Franzens, a, a husband and wife and a child, thought someone had thrown firecrackers into the car of, during the assassination. And as a matter of fact, most people describe the sound of the shots as a firecracker in the street or a motorcycle backfire, not the sound of a rifle from 100 feet up in the air. You know, looking at the, uh, the pictures, it looked like in one of the pictures, um, when it was taken from behind the presidential limousine, and it shows uh, at the time of the shooting, what appears to be a Secret Service agent on the back left bumper reaching over and into the vehicle. Yes, that it, was Clint Hill trying to get push Jackie Kennedy back into the car. That's never been explained, and this, this theory explains it. Why, if shots are coming in to the limousine, is Jacqueline Kennedy frantically trying to get out of the car right after the president is shot in the head? Did, did Jackie Kennedy ever explain... Uh, whether she saw the driver turn and shoot her husband? I mean, she he's only never feet away. She did and wouldn't because they were protecting her and her children for the next seven years before she left the country. But she did say that day on Air Force One, when Admiral Berkeley approached her and asked her to, to stand next to Lyndon Johnson for the swearing in, and she was covered in blood, and she hissed, and she's looking up at the front of the cabin at Johnson and his entourage that had taken over the plane. She hissed, I want them to see what they've done. I won't change my clothes. Now, uh, conspiracy theories are, uh, are really sort of a, a popular pastime for many people. Yeah, we've been... <laughs> you heard this question? <laughs> all of us suffering from <laughs> Kennedy assassination fatigue, myself included. Yeah, I was going to say, and... Uh, you know, for conspiracies to work, uh, obviously the conspiracy that uh, you know the book suggests requires the cooperation of a lot of conspirators. Not necessarily. In the book, it's, it's only about a dozen. 
Those 50. people that, that, for example, the driver himself controlled the president's clothing and kept it from the autopsy doctors during the autopsy. The clothing would have told told a lot about where the shots came from, and he locked it in his locker. Uh, they had the limousine, and President Johnson ordered it totally remodeled and rebuilt. And that windshield, which had a bullet hole in it, became just a crack. It wasn't a bullet hole. So if you have control of the evidence, uh, who's going to who's going to arrest a Secret Service agent? Well, well, let's let's take the um, the bullet hole in the windshield. Yes. Um, if the Secret Service was responsible for that bullet hole in the windshield. And yeah. they were going to sort of destroy that evidence or remove that evidence. Yeah, because that wouldn't fit into the ch- the uh, scenario of three shots uh, above 80 feet at the same angle as the windshield, because the windshield is parallel and wouldn't. It, that type of glass can only be shot through at ground level. Mm-hmm. So, well, do you well, want to hear the uh, tape of one of the? Uh, oh, sure. Doctors? Okay. Tell tell us what we're going to hear. Okay. This is Harry Freeman. He was one of the motorcycle cops in front of the president. He was under the triple overpass during the shooting, and he guarded the limousine at the hospital. And, and, and when, when was this tape made? This was made in 1971. Okay, uh, about eight years after. Yep. Okay, let's hear the officer. Sure. Looking at page uh, 242 of your book, it looks like yeah, there's a, a circle around a photograph showing a, a hole. It looks like with a crack. Mm-hmm. Uh, where did that shot come from? Inside? It had to come from ground level, from behind the, the windshield, not from the front. Not because the front there right. was a there was a, another there was a bystander that was wounded that day. And his name was James Tag. He's down by the triple overpass. That is the reason why. There couldn't have been a bullet hole, and couldn't, and they, they, there shouldn't have been a bullet hole, according to the Warren Commission, because of that witness. He was he was wounded on the cheek by a bullet, and that bullet that went through the windshield. If you line it up about frame 329, the Zapruder film, where there's a big conical flare, you can see it explode in the Zapruder film. It lines up perfectly, going through it and on down to the overpass, and hitting the curb, nicking the curb, and then nicking James Takes cheek. So that bullet went through and wounded a bystander. Well, the, um, the, again, the concept uh, that you're suggesting, uh, d- have you talked to Oliver Stone yet? No. <laughs> Oliver Stone it, it would not be receptive to this, as is most of the Warren Commission critics. They're pretty vested in the idea that there was a shooter on the, on the grassy knoll and he came from the CIA. But our theory is that the CIA didn't control the evidence. They didn't have the limousine. The only people that could have gotten away with this thing were people who had their hands on the evidence, including the body, especially the body, because the autopsy said he was shot from behind and above. And there was six hours in between Dallas and Bethesda, and there's plenty of evidence showing he arrived and he left Dallas in one casket and arrived in another in a completely different condition. And so far, none of the participants are talking or have talked over these years. This is the, this theory is so awful, so diabolical. Uh, nobody dares talk about it because if it had been exposed at the time, it would have brought the government down. The, the entire credibility of the government, the new government, the Johnson government, would have, be, would have been illegitimate. And, um, and, that, and that government uh, escalated the Vietnam War and caused 60,000 
needless deaths because Kennedy mm-hmm. was going to pull the troops out in 65. Well, the name of the book is called Murder from Within. It's Lyndon Johnson's plot against President Kennedy. Tyler Newcomb, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us tonight. We'll be back next week, so between now and next week, have a great week. Good night.